They say, if you want to learn about a culture, listen to the stories. If you want to change a culture, change the stories. These lores and tales underpin the heartbeat of a culture, a society. Stories might not be told around bonfires and family hurts anymore, but they've always managed to follow people wherever they go through various media. In the times of motion pictures, I, Dejna Daulagufu, a student of anthropology studying in Delhi University, have endeavored to unearth and present the stories of my people, the Dimasas. The Dimasas are inheritors of a rich oral tradition. Dimasa folklores and songs carry centuries worth of knowledge and ideas that have been passed down from generation to generation. The stories of Ashimpa and Dishu, the Dimasa princess, are among the common stories every Dimasa child has heard. <laughs> Tellers of stories have mostly always been the eldest members of the community. So important are these tales and lures to the Dimasas that they influence almost every aspect of their lives. Plots often depict real emotions and morals as a means of teaching. Animals depicting human qualities, human characteristics. They are very faithful should imbibe that faithfulness. So there is there was always some element of moral lesson attached with the story. So at the end of the story, what we eventually learn is not the story itself. I'm Bobola Itzka there. I'm Wangsubala Itzka there. It's not just the story and it's not just pure enjoyment. Somewhere, Shlingri do how to be a better human being. The Dimasas form a substantial part of the population of the two very culturally distinct states of India, Assam and Nagaland. This has come to be due to the shifting of the capitals of the medieval Dimasa kingdoms from Dimapur in Nagaland to Maibang and then Khaspur in Assam. Dimasas are hence a culturally heterogeneous society of people which has in turn influenced its folklores. So you will find that in Dimasas many folk traditions also you have from area to area there is some slight variation in the story you know variance. So suppose uh, one uh, in the Dimapur area or in the Kargi Omnong or in Kacha the same story would have you know different kind of uh, different versions there. there. For instance, you might get a Dishro's uh, version different from that region to your region. But this has been continued with lots of interpolation now. Yeah, that is the importance. But with the modern times, I think uh, people don't evoke this uh, folk tales and folk stories. But only what is important in identity making. Besides language, beliefs, cuisine, and the like. The Dimasas also have a very special etiological tale in common that explains the origin of the world as we know it. The story of Arikidima and Bangaraja. Ankanayaba story Jakala Arikidima. Arikidima is an eagle goddess and she was flying to and fro in the you know the land there was nothing. And then he meets his beloved, that is Bangla Raja, the god of uh, earthquake. And she conceives uh, seven eggs, okay? 
and then from six eggs the deities of our clan was born uh, just key, for example uh, the first is alu raja hamia dao uh, gainu brainu and du raja waraja and, and the last one was not born okay so uh, mother was very worried very what to do with that seventh egg uh, so he asked she asked one of the uh, son to just give a kick on that egg and when they kick and from there was the evil spirit was born so this is how Dimasa's universe are conceived but like how good is born how bad is born here we can get again our gods are you know zoomorphic like some animals half animal half human and our mother our goddess is the mother not the father unlike Abrahamic faith the creation story and its characters propel the Daiko system and the rituals of the Dimasas. Hence, it also propels the soul of the society. The story of Ariki Dimas has a relevance in our Daiko system because uh, Ariki Dimas' seven children are clan deities and these are worshipped in particular territories in where the Dimasas reside today. Uh, and there is a Jontai, there is Pujai, they do annual worship, they sacrifice fowl, offer, you know, uh, juke, rice wine to, uh, to these deities so uh, they can gain some merits and, and also for the welfare of particular clan. The seventh one being the eagle, Hamyadao. We say Hamyadao. Huh? So we do invoke uh, during our rituals, practices, we do invoke Hamyadao also. But suppose Phadang Dangba, Dangba. There is particular ritual you know, invoking Hamyada also so that nothing happens, you know. I am from Numisa clan. We know that we can't eat certain uh, vegetables and certain meat and also certain metal we can wear. And there are certain, uh, these are norms, and to justify the norms, there are f folk tales related to it. And one of them is that while worshipping uh, some god they offered snail, pork and uh, leaf called mijen and uh, when they when the king came and saw uh, he, he exclaimed means you gave us gave me to eat these dirty things and since that time the king said I, we, are, we are not going to eat those things so those things those materials are pork snail a crab and uh, some certain leaf, baritai and yeah, metal we are not supposed to wear. Uh, so not metal, sorry, gold jewelry. Uh, so like they believe that like, if you put a gold jewelry in your house, there will be spark of fire, and you know the house might burn. <laughs> Folk tales are not always just stories about mystical creatures and talking vines, but are also a rich source of oral history. Burmese war in Assam during 1826, when Burma invaded Manipur, Assam, Ahom Kingdom, every all it was a disastrous effect in Northeast at that time. So we have a Bushu song which says, Burmese Haro Khaidu Khaila. Even in uh, the Nogao Dimasa also have similar songs. Burmese Haro Khaidu something run away, all those sort of things. The soul of the Dimasa culture rests in its villages. However, as more Dimasas like me are moving further away from these villages, the stories are getting lost and muddled. Bushu or the annual harvest festival celebrated in the winter by the Dimasas often entail playing traditional games, cooking, dancing and singing together. As more and more Dimasas are moving away from home, it is becoming increasingly important that the tradition of storytelling is kept alive lest it gets lost in the ocean of cultures in cosmopolitan cities. The inheritors of this tradition are posed 
with the tremendous responsibility of keeping its folk culture alive.